Wheel of time. Wheel of time. Hello everyone, my name is Thomas White and this is Thomas Writes. Today I am finally going to be talking about The Great Hunt by Robert Jordan, which is book two in the Wheel of Time series. I'm sorry that it's taken me so long to get through this book, but to be honest, just school and work and the other things that I've been working on have been taking up a lot of my time, which is why I'm not going through the Wheel of Time as quickly as maybe other people are. I know it may be frustrating for some people that I'm reading other books at the same time as I'm reading The Wheel of Time, but for me, I like to be able to read multiple books at once, just so I can kind of get a fix of different genres, as well as so I can be publishing content on this channel that is not just about The Wheel of Time, but making the channel to where it can be all-encompassing of all the different books that I am reading at this time, and hopefully bring in a wider audience of people who are interested in this kind of content. I also feel like my first video on the Wheel of Time was a bit rough around the edges. I just kind of rambled and talked for a really long time and then put timestamps to try to organize my thoughts a little better. So I wanted to really take my time and kind of hone my reviewing skills a bit better so that this video will hopefully be a bit shorter than that first one, as well as more organized and hopefully my thoughts will be less scrambled. So the way that I have structured this review is first I'm I'm going to give my non-spoilery thoughts on the book, and then I will move in to spoilers. Now, keep in mind for non-spoilers, I am going to be reviewing this with the assumption that people have already read book one and, and know what happens in book one moving into book two. So I won't be spoiling anything in book two just yet, but if you don't want spoilers for the first book in The Wheel of Time, you may want to read the first book before listening to my thoughts on this one. Before I get into it, don't forget forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below on your own thoughts on the Wheel of Time as well as the Great Hunt in particular. I'm very new to the Wheel of Time fandom, so I'm very curious to hear what Wheel of Time aficionados think about this book. And I would also love to get the thoughts of people who are also reading this series for the first time. With that, let's go ahead and get into it. Kicking us off with my non-spoiler thoughts, I just want to begin by saying this book improved over the first book in every single way that I wanted it to. The most obvious difference for me between The Great Hunt versus The Eye of the World is that this one has much tighter pacing than the first book. Whereas the first book spent a lot of time kind of meandering and kind of figuring out where it was going, this book is very clear on what the main objective is. It's established very quickly in the beginning. Here's the conflict. Here's the big MacGuffin that we're going to be chasing through the whole book. And here's what's at stake. Whereas in The Eye of the World, it was always kind of unclear up until the very end why exactly The Eye of the World itself was so important and why it was so groundbreaking to the whole universe. Whereas here, The Horn of the Hunt is very clearly established why it's important and why it would be a bad thing if the bad guys got a hold of it. So while it had a kind of similar structure to the first book, I think it was executed much better. I think the first book had a pretty strong first third and a pretty strong last third, but the middle third, the middle chunk, really dragged it down because so much of it was spent on just Rand and Matt running from village to village, being discovered by dark fiends, and then having to run again, and it just got kind of repetitive. For this book, the quest that they're going on, they vary up the encounters a lot more so that 
different things are happening. There is still conflict, there is still action, but it's not the exact same kind of story beat happening over and over again. The things that the characters run into in this book have huge implications for the universe as a whole, and the powers that they start to discover, and the new factions that come into play in terms of shaking up the geopolitical structure of the world. I mean, so many things are starting to happen now that are just fundamentally changing the world of the Wheel of Time, which is very exciting to see. I think that the new faction that's introduced in this book is very cool. They're very interesting and terrifying at the same time, a really good antagonistic force for our heroes to face. I also think that the character development in this book is even stronger than that of the first. We get a lot more of Rand wrestling with the fact that he is the Dragon Reborn, but he doesn't want to accept that, and it's made a lot more clear in this book as to why that is such a obstacle for him to overcome as a character, seeing the history of this world, seeing how his actions affect so many of the people around him. It makes a lot more sense why he is so resistant to being the one to fulfill this prophecy. I also really love the way Nynaeve factors into this book. We get a lot more about her and a lot more insight into her persona. There's two sequences that I'll talk about in the spoiler section that really stood out to me that I thought helped really solidify her as a good character to me. I was a little iffy on her in my review of the first book, but in this book I think she is fleshed out a lot better. You come to sympathize with her a lot more and understand why she's one of the more cynical and angry of the group. It, it just makes a lot more sense when you start to see what she goes through and the kind of stuff that's happening to her her friends. I think one of the things that also helps the pacing of this book is that it's playing around with a lot more different perspectives. Whereas in the first book, for the most part, you were sticking with a main group of people going from one place to the other until they get fractured off, and then it kind of jumps between Matt and Rand's perspective and then goes back to Egwene, Perrin, and that group. Whereas in this book, there's like four or five different perspectives that we jump between, and that could get pretty overwhelming if done poorly. But the way it's done here is very masterful, because you get introduced to all these different characters at the beginning, some of them seemingly very minor, but when you get to the final ten chapters of this book, you see the payoffs for why all of these minor characters were set up, and all of the different storylines converge into just what is an awesome finale. I mean, the battle scenes were awesome, the character development was emotional, there were some just really heartfelt moments, uh, some moments that made me really emotional, some moments that made me want to kind of pump my fist and cheer for the characters and their successes. It was just everything I could want for in the climax to an epic fantasy quest book. And with that, I think it's official to say that I'm a Wheel of Time fan. I, I was had mixed thoughts on the first book because some parts were a little slow for me, but just the way everything comes together in this book is just so perfect. I have very few gripes that I can level at this book. There are a couple that I will get to in the spoiler section, but overall, this is just awesome. It is, there's really no other way to describe it. I literally put in my notes an awesome finale in all caps. I understand now why people rant and rave about this series so much, because while it can be kind of a slow burn to get to the climax, once that climax hits, ooh, man, it is so, so satisfying to see all of these different storylines pay off, to see all of these characters come together and overcome all these horrible struggles. It's just so good, and I can't wait to see where the rest of the books go with what was set up here, because that ending line, that ending scene, 
left such a good cliffhanger for the future of the series because at the end of this book the world of the wheel of time has been irreparably changed and rand has come to a point where he has to either choose to accept his destiny or deny it and i can't wait to see where that goes i'm so excited so now I'm going to go ahead and get into my spoiler-filled thoughts on the book, and can I just start off by saying, Tom is alive! Thank goodness! I am so glad that Tom Marilyn survived. I kind of figured he would, since his death was left a bit ambiguous in book one, and even though he didn't play a big role in book two, it was great to see that he was still alive, that he still had a good relationship with Rand, and he let him keep the flute. I thought that was a really cool gesture. I was heartbroken when his girlfriend had her throat slit in her sleep. I, that, I literally covered my mouth and my eyes just got huge because I was not expecting that to happen, and I was so sad for Tom, and not gonna lie, was pretty happy when he slaughtered the assassins that killed her. That was just such an effective scene, because now he has been reintroduced into the story, and now he has a reason to get back into the action, so I'm really curious to see how he factors in to future books, because I'm sure this isn't the last we've seen of him. Also, can I just say, hashtag justice for Dina, like, come on, that, that girl was done so dirty. That was pretty sad. It was a good scene, but it, it made me sad. Also, what I was saying in my non-spoiler section, I really liked Nynaeve in this book. Particularly, I really liked the testing, the way we got to see how the Aes Sedai initiation works, going through those different gateways and being confronted with these different things, her deepest, darkest fears. It's a little bit cliche, some might say, for the fantasy genre, but I thought the way it was done here was very effective, especially the stuff involving her fears of not being able to be with Lan, even though that she loves him so much, being afraid that she might lose him, that she won't be able to be married to him. I thought all of that stuff was really good. And then when we get towards the end, the way that she takes initiative when Egwene is captured and has to go rescue her, how she and Elaine work together, they <laughs> capture Sita, and she interrogates her with the, I forget what it's called, the Adam, I think it is, the silver bracelet that lets them control and leash Aes Sedai. Just the way that was done was so intimidating and awesome. Her lines, I have to find one of the really good ones that I liked. I love this line. I hope Leandrin is there. I will make her curse the day her mother laid eyes on her father. <laughs> it's just so good. I love it because Nynaeve, keep this in mind, Nynaeve is a teenage girl and Yet the way she talks, she commands so much authority, and you fully believe that she is willing to do whatever it takes to save her friends. It's just so awesome. Also, talking about characters, Ingtar, that reveal blew my mind. I had no idea that it was going to be revealed that he was a dark friend the whole time, and that... That was the big reason why he was obsessed with finding the Horn of Valir, was so that he could redeem himself from his actions from beforehand. That was surprisingly emotional. That was probably the most emotional moment in the book for me, because throughout the book you see that Ingtar is obsessed with finding the Horn. Like No matter what, he is willing to risk life and death to find this thing, and me as a reader, I was questioning, like, okay, like, I know we gotta get this thing, but you're, you seem, like, obsessed with this. Why is that? And then the explanation that was given was so good and heart-wrenching, and I love that Intard was able to redeem himself at the end, even though it did cost his life. 
And to be honest, that whole finale was amazing. Ran's sword fight with Turok was really cool. His battle with the Dark Lord was awesome. I loved the reveal we got that everyone was able to see his battle between the himself and the Dark Lord. They saw it in the clouds above the city. I just... I felt like I could picture the image that Robert Jordan was going for so clearly in my mind. Again, it was everything I wanted in an epic fantasy book finale. There were great emotional moments, an awesome final battle, and I was definitely also not expecting that the Horn of Valir would actually be used at the end of the book. And I loved the irony of Arthur Hawking taking his armies and just wiping out the Shan Shan, who are the remnants of his earthly armies from hundreds of years before, and the irony that the Shan Shan worship Arthur Hawking, and now he is the one to just decimate their whole army is... Man, that was so satisfying. That was really cool. Also, correct me if I got this wrong. Was it revealed that Selene was actually one of the Forsaken the whole time? Did, did I get that? Did I, or did I miss something? Because the way, ah, oh, what was her name? The woman at the very end, the way she was described, sounded so much like Selene. She was the most beautiful woman men had ever seen, with pale, smooth skin and long black hair and eyes as dark as night. It was Celine. It was her the whole time. I think I'm right on this. I did kind of suspect that Celine was going to turn out to be a bad guy because she was just way too knowledgeable on the horn for no reason and seemed to know immediately that Rand was the Dragon Reborn and took a very strange interest in him almost immediately. <laughs> you know, almost immediately there's romantic tension between the two of them. And so I was like, eh, this girl is kind of suspicious. And turns out my suspicions were correct. I double-checked this, and Min was the only one to see Lanfear in kind of her true form when she revealed who she really was. Rand was unconscious for that. So is Rand still not going to know that Selene is actually Lanfear, a top lieutenant of Balzaman? Because that could get very interesting. And while we're on the subject of Rand and women, can I just say that the only thing that kind of bugged me with this novel is how all of the women Rand's age are interested in him for no good reason, in my opinion. I mean, yes, I get it. He's the main protagonist. Yes, he is the Dragon Reborn. He is this amazing hero who has fought the Dark Lord all across time. But the fact that Min, Elaine, and Egwene are all interested in him, all express at least a passing interest in him at some level. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I, I also get it. They are all teenagers at this point in the story. It's like this is high school and Rand is the popular guy in the class and so all of the girls just like him by default <laughs> is what it what it feels like to me. It didn't annoy me too much, but I did think it was a little weird at the end when Min is holding an unconscious Rand next to her and Egwene is like, hey, you know, I, I kind of like Rand and Min is like, well, what would you know? You're an Aes Sedai and Aes Sedai rarely ever get married and it's like this seems to get hostile very quickly for no reason like those characters never had any tension until that moment that was that was just a little odd to me and if this results in a love triangle or a love square I guess I'm gonna be a little peeved about that it won't ruin it for me I'll just be a little upset <laughs> that little piece of me will just break off and disintegrate into ash. But it's okay. I'll be fine. Worse things have happened. The other big thing I want to mention here in spoilers is I love Rand's character arc through this whole book of him 
knowing that he's the Dragon Reborn, but being in denial because he doesn't want to be used by the Aes Sedai. He doesn't want to go insane. He just wants to live a quiet, peaceful life, to settle down, to hopefully marry Egwene, and just live his life as a normal guy. And the way that's presented, it's very believable. And throughout this whole book, you see him wrestle with his identity of he wants to be a leader, he wants to protect the men around him, but he also doesn't want to be the hero. He doesn't want to follow his destiny. I love the way that at the very end it is left as an open question whether or not he is going to accept that yes, I am the Dragon Reborn, I am going to fulfill my destiny and lead these people. I got emotional at the scene when Uno and all of his men are bowing and laying their swords before Rand. That, that was some powerful, good, good stuff. So now I'm going to go ahead and give my final rating, and at the end of the day, The Great Hunt by Robert Jordan is a fantastic follow-up to The Eye of the World that I think outdoes the first book in every possible way. The battles are even bigger and better, the character dynamics are even stronger, the plot twists get even better and crazier, and the pacing is so tight that I was never really bored while reading this book. I have very few complaints that I can level at this book. Overall, I would say that book one of The Wheel of Time got me interested in the series, but this is the book that has sold me on it, and I have, have to finish it now. So I'm going to give The Great Hunt 5 out of 5 stars. This is a fantastic read, and for anyone who has never tried The Wheel of Time before, I would recommend that you do so. They are long, they are a time sink, but the payoffs that you get from the time you spend in this series are so worth it, in my opinion. I hope you guys will continue to join me as I go through this acclaimed series and that you will stick around to see my reactions and thoughts to future books because I'm going into this completely blind, not knowing where it's going, and I gotta say, I'm loving what I'm experiencing so far. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and add The Great Hunt to The Book Altar. didn't fall this time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you will continue to watch as I journey through the Wheel of Time. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.